ha ha! It's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitary Mega Tournament, and I'm saying ha ha because my plan worked. I uh, last video was very um, wordy in explaining the game under the pretense of being um, helpful, but really I was the person I was helping was myself. I was helping myself get the rules right uh, by by telling the rules and saying some of them wrong, uh, which I didn't do on purpose, but I figured was probably the case. Um, I open the door for people to help me get them right, and I appreciate everyone who's pointed out um, errors, and I shall endeavor to correct those, because I'm not uh, completely evil, I'm just human, which is is just human. So the first one involves resources. I, I had the suspicion that I was getting this wrong. Um, as, as all the people are right now, after a propaganda card or at the start of the game, or, you know, just if they happen to be that way, um, if, there are f if there are four people in there, I've been playing it that if you don't do an action, you it's as though you pass. But I don't think, and in, in, in a pass gives you resources, right? But I don't think you actually get resources unless you actively pass. So what I was playing, um, I think the example that was pointed out to me is that actually just a minute ago, right before I was starting to, to tape, it was very good timing, um, I think it was the government player and the FARC uh, were able to get money after the cartel and the AUK did did actions, and I think they weren't supposed to. Now, since I was, I've was i been doing that the whole time, I'm not going to go back and change anyone's money or anything like that, because that can be a, a headache to try and erase the past, especially when we're so far in the future where, where we did a propaganda. And the other thing is, speaking of propaganda, cartels don't win at 10 bases. They have to have more than 10. It's even right here. I mean, that's a greater than. It's not greater than equal to. I was, um, and I and I know I've played this way too since I've started playing the game. I've been playing greater than or equal to. So those are the two two big things. If you come up with anything else, please help me out. I know I gave away my fiendish intentions, but um, maybe you'll you'll find it in your heart uh, to to dissuade me from my misconceptions. So we had a pretty uneventful propaganda phase um, last time. So uneventful that I just ended up talking at length. It was like an extra 10 minutes of me just explaining the propaganda phase, but then I realized it's not really necessary. If you're going to play this game, you're going to figure that out. Uh, the basics of the propaganda are, uh, it's the time when the FARC and the government, the big time when they can um, change the support and the opposition. Um, it's the time when people get paid. It's the time when you figure out if anyone's won. Um, and what else? Just a few other things, like the government changes. That put down a FARC zone. This is something that um, Sonny wasn't paying enough attention to, I think. Um, usually after the first propaganda phase, unless the government's doing really well, a FARC zone's going to come into play. And what a FARC zone is, is basically a place the government can't go. Now, it's clear out in no man's land anyway. The government could potentially get there. Betty Crocker could bring his forces there, but I don't think it's likely. It would have been better if, like, say, the FARC zone was here. That's a good spot for it. It's a high population place, easily accessible by the government. If you can make that your FARC zone, you can really build up there and cause a lot of problems. But... Um, the, the reason why it's in Sonny's power, to some extent, is he can, um, the FARC zone goes where you have the most pieces. The government picks among the places where you have the most pieces, but this was the only place, so it had to go here, and that's not super helpful. So we're going to put this propaganda card aside so we can kind of track how far we are. That's one-fourth of the game, roughly, through. Um, let's see... You can see this exciting turn up of the next two cards. De Department of Defense Contractors and Mano Jojoy. Or is that Yoyoy? Uh, things are going to be starting off rough for Betty Crocker. Um, Sonny is, uh, still has his pieces from, from last time on these LOCs. They never got removed. And he's going to start things off just by sabotaging all of them, which is free for him. And he's going to get to do some kidnapping, get some money from the government, a big strong hit to start things off for Sunny. Whoops. I really like to film die rolls. Here we'll, here we'll do um, 3d6 amount of money units. One, five. These are the rolly wooden dice. Ten. And here I'm going to use pass appropriately. So the government would be next, but if he waits, he can act, he gets the big action on the next card. So he's gonna wait, pass, get three, it's because he did an active pass that he gets to do that. And now the other two get to decide 
Um, the cartel will probably act because the Auk has next shot in the next card, and the event would hurt the cartel. Government, um, Betty Crocker did, did consider, um, using the event here rather than passing. Probably if this card had not been in his favor, he would have, um, just because it, he can, he can use it to remove a couple bases. Um, Pinky is going to be able to prevent that by acting and not letting the, the Auk have a shot. Uh, so she is going to do limited operation or event. And then the Auk does not get to pass. If I'm playing this right. If I'm playing this wrong, let me know. I'm just kind of assuming now. Pinky's trying to extort some money from Betty Crocker. Um, this event here can make it so Betty Crocker's plan to act next turn uh, won't work. He was thinking she would she would not do it for some reason. Thought maybe she would want to uh, get in his good graces and protect herself, um, but she's not doing it. So he's he's refusing to pay her. He's got that look like, go ahead, do your worst. You see that on his face? He's like, go ahead. I'm not going to listen to you. You can just, you can read that, can't you? Um, and so she's going to do the event. Limited operations, not very interesting to her. And so that's going to make Fark, and who's already going to be ineligible, Sunny, and the government are going to be ineligible through the next card, so they're not going to be able to do anything. And uh, Betty Crocker has to lose three cubes, which is not a huge deal. I'll probably lose one from there, one from there, and one from somewhere else. To uh, help illustrate how learning games is a process, when I first started playing this game, I played any any card you didn't act on, even if you were in the ineligible box, um, you got to you got the the passing money. I don't know why I had that in my my head. It was never in the rules at all. But um, there there are always these misconceptions, and there are always these um, lack of conception. I think sometimes you can just conceive more of a game and like get more of it in your head, even after the fact, the point when you have all the rules down pat, um, and. That's what's always fun, I think, that there is that process. And it's not just learning the rules, but internalizing the game and then, you know, being able to work with that. There are levels, um, fluid levels. Sonny's getting a good card array to start off with. You see, he, he's the, the, the primary person in the first three. Government's the secondary person in the first three, but um, hasn't really paid off for Betty Crocker yet because he lost that card. Unfortunately for Pinky, um, government's going to get to act before her, get next dibs on the next two cards. Um, but he's still probably going to be the secondary player on each one because Fart gets to go first on this card and Ock on the next. So will he be able to have his revenge? Is he even interested in that? Those are big questions that demand answers. I'm kind of micro-reporting, but um, here's an interesting uh, thing in a multiplayer game or that you're playing solitaire, an interesting issue that just cropped up, and I thought I'd talk to you about it because it's interesting to me. Okay, so here we have this card here, um, and it's Sonny's Call. You know, we've already looked at the card. We've looked at Sonny. That's what he looks like. Um, Sonny has two basic choices, right? He's not really that interested in the event. The event's nice, but he's not super sh short on money. If he were lower on money, it'd be a bigger deal. But, you know, a full-on full -on operation is a lot more um, uh, useful to him right now than getting to put a base down somewhere. Um, but he has, so he has two choices to make. One is the op only. Nice thing about that is it can, it would keep Betty Crocker from being able to to use this event, which makes him lose a base, which he definitely doesn't want to do. If he loses a base, he's in the territory where the Auk can uh, win, and he would lose some money. You know, six is not a good amount to lose, um, unnecessarily. Now, what he doesn't know, and it, it took me a second to kind of sort this out in my mind, because I almost, I almost had him be like, what, what he doesn't know is that Betty Crocker doesn't even want to use this event. He doesn't feel like, um, he doesn't want the Auk to get in the position either. The Auk's looking pretty strong right now, um, and so he doesn't really want to help the Auk out. But I have to, I have to remember that Sonny doesn't know that, and Sonny is going to play as though he believes Betty Crocker is going to do that, because that's how, how things would look from Sonny's perspective. It's really hard to do that perspective taking, and I, and I fail at it a lot, but I feel like that's the right call in this case. Um, but I can guarantee you for every time I've, I've done it right, there's been times when I've twisted together the um, information that should be hidden uh, and let them have a certain sort of 
intuition that they probably wouldn't have. Although maybe that's where intuition comes from. And we're perhaps seeing an indicator of Betty Crocker's intentions. Uh, he did a limited op rally. Finally got some cubes on the map, which he desperately needed to do. I wouldn't put a, put past another rally for him uh, next time he gets the opportunity, though maybe not because he used it this time. Um, that did a couple of things. One, it put him in a place of uh, obvious like uh, peace superiority over the cartel who um, had control of this city here. This is the city that the cartel... Um, Starts off with, and the, the name, Cali, that's right. The name sl slipped my mind, but uh, it's Cali, which um, is a drug town. There's a lot of drug lords at one point in time. Uh, but it also allowed him to, to move it to active support. It's the only city in the game that starts out not supporting the government um, because of the drug people. Pinky's going with the event again. I, don't, I still don't think she's done in operations in the game so far, unless I've forgotten. But she's got this retail empire. She gets to add twice the number of pieces she has in a city. That's eight. So she's getting eight bucks. That's pretty good. 53. And then she has to put two bases down. Um, yeah, in each of two cities. So she'll probably go for this one, which is kind of the FARC have messed it up with a bunch of terror um, last round and then this round and then somewhere else. Pinky was somewhat short-sighted. She didn't think that about the fact that if she does the event, the next player can do a full action plus a full op plus special activity. And Betty Crocker did something that's kind of interesting to me. I uh, did a very focused sweep, despite the fact that he had one of the few f uh, full ops that he's had in the whole game. Um, but he did a very limited sweep just out of this, this pillar that he made here. Um, went into... Uh, this department and this department and um, not only did he sweep the FARC here which makes sense that he didn't want to do that but he swept the AUK now one thing that's problematic about that is the AUK isn't going to be able to take out this base now uh, with its assassinate ability and did that here as well so he basically helped out the FARC a good bit even as he took down um, everyone a bit as well, you know, but he actually hurt the FARC probably the least in that maneuver. Um, except that he's going to, you know, he's, if he can maintain the, the cube majority here or the peace majority, he will be able to um, take over this space, which would give him a, a hearty four points. So he also is going to use the eradicate action, which is good because um, Pinky is in win the game fate. Uh, territory right now. She's well above 10. Remember, it's greater than 10. I was wrong. Um, so he's going to take two discs off somewhere, and I think he's going to go for Panama. He's going to eradicate that, which is nice because that, that increases his earning potential by four as well. That move interested me because normally the government acts big. Uh, Betty Crocker is in financial trouble, though. He's, you know, he's got quite a bit of money, and he's got some good um, cost-saving measures but he also doesn't have a huge earning potential because of all this sabotage, which is one of the unfortunate things about what he just did because eh, Junior didn't take too kindly to that action, which actually probably hurt him as more than anyone. Uh, well, yeah, I guess he did take a couple of her bases. But Auk gets to act on this next card, Pipeline Repairs. He could repair all of this damage that the FARC did which is, you know, a good, like, probably 16 or so bucks. Um, but he's he's going to have to do some negotiating with him. Um, he would have been able to probably pay him to do it, especially, since you know, if he hadn't done this, because the Auk would be in pretty good position. Um, because Junior is not doing so good on money. That's the, the Auk's big problem. He's going to have a little bit uh, harder time with that negotiation now. Junior turned him down. He actually did a bigger hit than he probably intended back at Betty Crocker. He's not really upset about what Betty Crocker did, though. He's a little annoyed. Um, I don't know if this is the wisest move. Junior's really hurting for money. He's going to have to make some deal or something to get some money back. Um, but he not only hit the support of Betty Crocker here, but he also ended up taking away one of his cubes. Uh, he took away, or not his cubes, his base. So now Betty Crocker is baseless. Uh, is that a huge deal? Maybe not. I mean, the cities are essentially like bases, but that's going to make it a lot more difficult for him to get that support back. 
he also did tear tear in a couple of other places, got rid of some some Fark bases. If he can get another base down, which shouldn't be too hard for uh, Junior, he will he will he will have met his win condition. The aid also drops, so that's going to hurt Betty Crocker's money here. Big news with the Carabineros, Pinky finally did her first uh, ops plus special activity. So what she did was she rallied. Um, you know the ops for. And maybe it's something I'm still yet, it's probably something I've still yet to learn about the game, but I don't find the ops to be as compelling for the cartel player. Um, their special activities are really nice, but, you know, attack, you rarely have enough people to get a good attack going. March, March is useful, I guess, because you need to get pieces certain places in order to use the special activities. And rally is also useful, but they're not, you know, terror, it's mainly just to inhibit inhibit uh, one of the other players that you would do that. It's It seems less useful for the cartel player to me than the other players. Although the special activities are really great. Bribe is incredible. Um, but she didn't bribe. She instead did um, this move where she got, uh, it's called process. She got a special drug shipment over here in Panama, which she rallied into there. And after that, that uh, Betty Crocker followed it up. He used an event which was very useful for him. I, I mentioned in the last video about how it's sometimes tricky to get police into departments, which is what you need to do in order to get um, to get support there. This let him place three police. Now, if he can keep those police alive, that's gonna that's gonna net him quite a few points. He's gonna get four. You know, if he can get the majority and keep the police alive, he'll get four, eight, and then two back, that'll give him 10. So that'll get him up to close to what he needs. If he can affect change in, a, in one of these towns too, that'll get him to 60 and then he still won't quite be there. But um, he has the ability to affect change in one place without police. So that would get him the rest of the way. Sonny's attitude may have put him in a bit of a bind. There are two uh, compelling things for him to do right now. He, he gets to do Ops plus special activity. The event is he actually wants the event to happen either way, so it doesn't doesn't matter to him. Well, not either way, but the the only likely way for it to happen. Um, his two main issues are, well, his big one is that the government's starting to get on his heels, and he doesn't want that. He doesn't want to lose these areas. His other issue is Pinky Man. Pinky is is very close to winning. Now the card here. Um, if someone invokes the event, can just get rid of three of the bases. He could just attack her, though, um, and be able to, to follow some of his other goals, like getting rid of the Auk from his air, area, maybe getting rid of some government pieces. But that would leave him very vulnerable to the government on the next government move, whenever that is. Um, so he could make a deal with Junior to use the event and pay Junior off, but he refuses to do that. So I think he is going to bite, he's not going to bite the bullet, he's going to just press on with defending his own stuff and hope that someone else is going to take care of Pinky. I just wanted to pause a moment, uh, the excitement, because something exciting is about to happen, and show you this gentleman here in this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures in the game, This because this fellow reminds me of um, someone in a sketch comedy sketch. And he's not. He's in this game. He's, and I believe that's a real photo. All these photos, I believe, are taken of real things. I believe that with all my heart. Um, but now the exciting part, it's propaganda. So let's take a, there's, there's, it's the last card before propaganda. It's going to be Auk Cartel are going to get to act. Let's take a look at how things are looking. Now the Auk could shift it so that they have the win, um, are in the winning thing. But then the cartel would also be able to win unless they took the awk down. So I'm going to actually have to turn to the rule book because it could be a case where both cross the finish line. So then I think it matters who crosses it better. Um, and I'll come back and, and kind of break down the, the, the likelihoods. And it, it might be the game's ending right away here um, on the second propaganda card, which isn't unusual for me because I'm not super good at it. Okay, so here's what the score currently looks like. We have Betty Crocker at negative eight. It's not very good. He's been doing a lot of planning for the future throughout the game, and uh, the future is not probably going to come. Uh, then we have Junior at zero. Okay, so he, he, and he gets the big action this turn, but he acts first, so we'll see what happens. Pinky, uh, she's at two, positive two. The only person with a positive 
uh, score currently, and Sunny is at negative four. You should always act like every turn could be your last when you have these propaganda cards uh, popping up and someone is um, over the win threshold. Now let's see what Junior decides to do. I really don't know if he can turn it to his advantage or not. I think he probably can do something. Although it would have probably been more interesting if Junior had a choice between helping himself and hindering Pinky, he is, I think, the only, yeah, he's the only player who doesn't have that option. Um, he actually, well, he does. He has uh, one in six chance of getting rid of two discs here, and that would continue the game. He could also get rid of one disc and only lose by one. Um, he's not going to do either of those things, however. He is going to make it so that they tie, and I'll have to check the rules to see what that even does. Um, if he rallies here, though, in both these places... That's going to put him at six, so he has a net of two as well. Um, and we'll see if she comes up with a way to counteract that. I don't know that she, she does have a way. She has potential of two limited operations. All right, and I found it's possible she could win or they tie, and it depends on what this passage means. Players after executing operations without special activities may remove a shipment they own for a free extra limited operation. Now, if Pinky is allowed to do two limited operations in a row, then she can win because she can move to a place and then rally there, get another base down, and then she has the win. However, so we have the op with no special activity right there. And then we have limited op, which technically has no special activity, but it doesn't have no special activity in its name. Um, I'm tempted to just put this up and have it be unknown and hope someone will tell me. I think that will go well with the theme of everything. All right, well, either way, that's going to be the game. So either we had a tie between these two, in which case someone needs to tell me what happens in a tie, or... Pinky won. It really depends on that rule. I kind of think it's a tie, though. Um, they capitalized things in a way. Well, I guess they capitalized it anyway. I really don't know. Uh, a lot of fun with this game. I, I can play it again and again. Um, there's there's different paths to explore in all of the asymmetric sides. Um, I love to play it with other people. I love to play it solitaire. Uh, this game, I was... I'll just babble for a little bit because I'm sure I have some time left. Um, there's nothing more relevant though, so you can stop it now if you don't want to hear me babble. Um, but this game is one of the first when I got interested in contained games actively. It used to be I just, uh, you know, once upon a time, I, if I saw a contained game that looked interesting at a thrift shop, I'd pick it up, but I was more into other sorts of things. Um, but ever since I, I started to really um, pay attention to this art form, um, this was one of the first that I, I really anticipated coming out. I'm not really up on um, what games are up and coming or anything like that, but um, once upon a time I was a little more aware of what games were out there and what games were coming up, and this one um, I anticipated for over a year, and it's, I've, I've really appreciated it. Thanks.